All right, what's up, everybody? It's BQ here, back on the channel. If it's your first time here, please hit that subscribe button, or at least consider it. You know what I mean? Maybe, maybe even give this video a thumbs up. So this is the upload that people have been waiting on from me, because I get the question all the time: Who's TNA's big signing? Now I've got a few names here that I'm going to get into. And I've said in the past that I believe I have some names that people aren't talking about. Now, it might be a little unfair for me to say that because I don't listen to every wrestling podcast in the world. Um, but but I do feel confident in saying, well, some of these names, even if they maybe have been brought up, are not, uh, not necessarily on top of everyone's mind. Uh, not necessarily names that people on, on a regular basis are speaking about. And that's why I didn't want to really jump into this right away when the news came out, because, you know, we start, everyone starts talking about the same names. I like to sit back a little bit and think, what are some other possibilities out there? So I will get into my slideshow here in a bit. Um, but I do want to say, first of all, that, you know, we don't know what Scott Demore's idea of a big signing is. There's a lot of things that Scott does that's very, very good for the company. I, I wouldn't say he does anything bad for the company, but he's done bad things. Um, when I say bad, I mean bad as in uh, not good, uh, not enjoyable, not fun. You know, I'm not talking about damaging to the company. He has not done that. So I just want to make that clear. When I say Scott Demore does bad things, I don't think he's damaging the company. I don't think he's he's hurting the company, but he's there's questionable decisions, whether it's creatively or what he thinks is good. You know what I mean? So we don't know what to him is a big signing. Now, the majority of these names I'm going to talk about here, uh, some are ones you already know that you've already seen on and heard on other podcasts, okay? But I, I would say the majority of these names are some of the biggest, would be some of the biggest signings in TNA history. Now, when when Scott says that, people are thinking, I think has even name dropped them, you know, Kurt Angle, Christian Cage, Sting, like he's putting them on that level or people are at least thinking of them on that level. And I don't think anyone is on the level of those guys. That doesn't mean one of the signings still won't be one of the biggest in TNA history because the majority of these names I'm going to get into are bigger stars than who are on the roster currently or have been on the roster in the past several years. So you might think Sting, Christian, Kurt Angle, the, the number four under that might be a very distant four, but it's still, you know, they're still one of the bigger stars. I'm not talking about better wrestlers, better people. I'm talking about overall star power names that the internet community or the casual wrestling fan would know. And the last thing I want to say before I get into these names is that for me, I think when when TNA goes big fish hunting, I, th I don't think that's a strategy that works, will work, has worked. I would rather them you know, allocate decent money to several people to where we can really build up the roster, build up the divisions, because I've used the examples of the Good Brothers. They come in, they're huge, you're way bigger stars than anyone on the roster. So who the what kind of storylines can you possibly do? And you know they're gonna run the division. Trinity comes in, she's a much bigger star than everyone on the roster outside of Mickey James at the time. She's running the division. You bring in, I'm trying to think of another name off the top of my head. Even when like Kenny Omega came in, okay? I know he wasn't part of the, the, the company, but much bigger star than everyone on the roster. So now he's now running the heavyweight division. And I'm sure there's a X division name out there if I really, really thought hard about it. And um, I, I guess I do got one more thing to say is that I do think some people are burnt from... Uh, the slam anniversary several years ago, which which that was the one where our world, the world's going to change, or our world's going to change, whatever the hell that they said, and that was their single best marketing promotion campaign of anything they've done under the Anthem umbrella. To where we're like, who's going to show up at Slam anniversary, right? 
and uh you know people were very very excited about it and i think it ultimately kind of bombed because you know we got the motor city machine guns who i think people were expecting to show up if i don't if i if i recall but they weren't even signed you know they were working handshake deal we got eric young who i think a lot of people expected to return i think that was a good one um we got heath which you know wasn't really exciting for people we got brian myers the next day like uh, it was on an episode of impact so it wasn't even not the next day but the next week um we got ec3 who people were excited about but he didn't do anything he just came in for a segment uh you know a backstage uh what, what do you call it? cinematic match with moose nothing really happened from that right um and i think there was and then there was the good brother so at the time impact felt that the good brothers was the needle mover and you know i feel that i was pretty excited about it initially uh, but i i got very tired of them quickly so let's get into these names uh we're going to talk mercedes here first though i don't expect her to show up i mean i'd be remiss if i didn't talk about her i don't expect her to show up i've never thought she was going to show up I think her, you know, I would love for her to show up. I am, that was one of my biggest, uh, I mean, one of the wrestlers I was the biggest fan of when I watched the company. I would love for her to show up in TNA, but I do think her star power is too great for the company. I think she would run the division, and that's really not what I want. So um, I don't, you know, there's a lot of rumors about AEWs, even some WWE rumors out there. But if once they said, hey, Trinity's on her way out the door, Mercedes is not coming. We're going to talk Hammerstone real quick. We already know that he is on the card for Hard to Kill. And this is the right place for him. The only way I could see him not ultimately remaining in TNA is if there's some angle where with what MJF has going on right now, because he clearly needs partners. Do Hammerstone and Richard Holiday show up in AEW as his backup? You know, and that might be something in the back of Hammerstone's head that is a possibility. I don't think he would be a a big star over there just because the way that they're formatted right now with their roster, lots of WWE people at the top. I think it would be hard for him to to break in. But to move over to TNA, and I'm not going to say this is not a lateral move because TNA is a much bigger better company than mlw but if we're talking wrestlings and companies are in three tiers we'll say tier one is wwe AEW is tier two and everything else is tier three okay i think as long as you're operating in that tier three i'm probably offending some people right now that think it impacts in the tier two they're not um if you're moving in that tier three you're, you're bouncing the uh, nwa to mlw to TNA, even if, God, even, I'm not going to throw ROH into that category. If you're a big star in one of those companies, you can be a big star in those other ones as well. You know, I th- I think there's so many simil- there's so many similarities with those companies that what translates in one should translate to the other fairly decently. So I'm going to try to kind of start with the less... Uh, less exciting of these names or less controversial, whatever. Elijah, I feel very confident that he is going to show up in the company. I do not see him. Um, and I I didn't watch his like main roster work, but I was familiar with the gimmick and familiar with his NXT work because I was watching at the time that he was down there. I don't see how he would break into the to AEW like he's one of those guys he might get like that initial pop you know what I mean and then probably fade to relative obscurity over there so I I do think this is a a very good place for him uh you know I I want to see the top of the card fill up I don't want to see the same people wrestling for number one contender matches I mean every time they get into these number one contendership tournaments or matches. I mean, you got guys in there. You had you Murray in there at one point. You know, we've had Brian Myers. We've had Dango. You know, they they really need to beef up that top of the card. And it the superstar may not be available to do that with. But you know, this is someone I I do think um, in a smaller company could kind of get up there, and and we could 
we could buy it. I don't know if I'd put the belt on them, but um, I think it could work. And I, I would imagine he's going to keep elements of what made him popular. And I, you know, he strikes me as someone who's going to reinvent himself a little bit too, which is really what uh, TNA needs. And that video that he put out on Twitter uh, looks 100% like he was produced by TNA. I mean, if you compare that to that video where they're out in the woods making the announcement that TNA's back, I, I mean, they're like identical in, in editing. So I do expect him to show up. And again, we don't know what Scott's idea of a huge signing is. Okay. But I do think we're going to see multiple people. And for me to really guess exactly who Scott is talking about is very, very difficult. Again, because I'm going to repeat myself. We don't know what his idea of a huge signing is, you know, so it's a little bit hard to speculate, but I do think we're going to see this man there. Sean Spears, I've talked about him a little bit on the channel as well. Very big fan of the dude. Um, another one that I think would very seamlessly factor into the, the main event picture. He could be the champion at one point, and, and I don't think people would be turned off by it. You know, um, I'm not a huge, huge fan of, hey, let's bring in this guy from another company, put the belt on him right away. I wouldn't put the belt on this dude right away, but I could live with him being the champion. He's another guy that I think is going to keep elements of what has made him popular, what has gotten, gotten him over, but is going to continue to uh, reinvent himself a little bit. And I thought his AEW work when he was more serious rather than when he got goofy at the end, uh, I thought there was a lot of potential with that. Uh, but, you know, everything in AEW is goofy at this point. So uh, if he could dial it back on that, a little bit and if tna can fight their worst instincts and dial it back a little bit on their uh versions of bad comedy you know kind of like some of the stuff they were doing with cardona at the end i think uh sean spears could be a major player i don't see an, a scenario where he is back in the wwe um i'm sure he wouldn't mind it but i don't see where you know unless he's like strictly chasing the money I think I kind of just get the vibe in general that he wants a little bit more for himself because he was one of the very first uh, people to join AEW that was from WWE. So he was like, you know, uh, I want to do something more for myself. I have bigger and better ideas for myself. So um, I, I think it, it's a possibility. Um, I'm going to talk one more name that we're, we've all been talking about here. Um, Nick Nima. And, you know, when he showed up in New Japan, <laughs> I saw the internet wrestling community freaking out because they said, oh, he's, he's in New Japan. And I told everyone this. I was like, he is not signing in New Japan. I don't care what anyone <laughs> thinks. He is not signing in New Japan. Could he be doing, like, New Japan strong? I guess that is a possibility. If he thinks, hey, I'm going to be the number one guy here. Let's do something different. Crazy. This man is not chasing the money at this point. But he is also uh, so far along in career and age that he has not taken the two-day the two -day flight excuse me, to Japan. Um, now, to do it here or there is one thing. To do, do Japan strong United States is one thing. I don't follow New Japan even a little bit. I don't like it. It's not bad. It's just not for me. So I, I know a lot of people who do follow it. They know the ins and outs. They know who's who's showing up at this date and who's in the country and who's not in the country. And they're following all these like real little small details about New Japan Pro Wrestling and the people involved with it. We are getting Okada at Hard to Kill. Not at Hard to Kill, but at Snake Eyes. I do not think that was a favor by New Japan. There is some kind of agreement between the two sides. The agreement may have been, hey, we sent you Josh and the Motor City Machine Guns a few months ago. Maybe maybe that's what it is. It very well could be that is the agreement. But there is there is some kind of business agreement between the two, and I think that the two sides have been talking, and I do think uh, him showing up at the New Japan show is a much bigger picture um, of working with TNA as well. Could he show up in AEW? 
absolutely his brother's there. But he also does strike me as a guy that's not going to just chase the money and just says, you know, hey, I, I'm kind of ready to be at the top of the card. And, um, you know, might want to wrestle on a more part time basis. So, uh, you know, I, I think that is very much a possibility. But um, as every day passes, I'm a little more uh, optimistic that he's going to show up. Do I think he would sign with the company long term? That is the one thing I'm really, really going back and forth in my head about because we don't know what he wants out of his career at this point. And I do think the the mustard is off the hot dog with going over to AEW, especially with the number of WWE people they have signed over there. Uh, I, I really do think the mustard is off the proverbial hot dog. And, uh, you know, this might be the first guy to say, hey, I'm going to do something different and not follow what everyone else is doing. We're going to get into my first name here that I don't think people are really talking about, which uh, this is someone you could either say is, yes, one of the biggest signings they've ever had, or you could be incredibly disappointed by the result as well. Shelton Benjamin is that guy. He's another one that I think he's at a stage in his career. I don't think he's necessarily chasing the money. I don't think he's chasing. I got to be in a big company because he is a little bit older. And this is, again, someone who would be in the main event picture. That would not be the case in AEW. A really true bloom is off the rose right now with it. There is so much negative negativity surrounding them right now. And there's a lot of positivity surrounding TNA. And this is someone I, I in Scott's mind, this could be the dude. This could be the dude that shows up at the end. Moose wins the world title and this guy comes out. Because usually when they do these debuts and things like that, they usually the person shows up and is making their intentions known that they're they're trying to wrestle for the gold. You know, it's it's very rare that, you know, TNA kind of brings in a bigger name and they're just, um, you know, they're just they just show up in the middle of the card or there's a video package or something. It's usually they usually some kind of dramatic entrance uh, to challenge the world champion or the knockouts champion. Um, this is this name with the rest of the ones I'm going to get into really all these names, but um, are names that I think people will be talking about. There's going to be a lot of buzz after hard to kill there's gonna be a lot i said before there's gonna be a huge high within the company with the wrestlers with the fans it's gonna be what they do with it after that because they've they've had those big bumps before and failed to capitalize but i do think all these names i'm getting into here i think are names that um i don't want to say move the needle but people people have an interest in the needle will be moved if you're bringing in several talents if you're just throwing your eggs into one basket, I don't think it, it moves the needle. But if, but this is one guy, if you're saying, hey, we're going to throw some money at a handful of guys, this is someone that I, I think you bring in and people would be be excited about it and see what, you know, and see what he does. This next name here, I'm bringing this name up because I don't think this is going to happen. But when Scott is saying, or TNA is saying, you are not going to believe who shows up, is there anyone that would shock the TNA fan base more than Tessa Blanchard at this point? There could be some money in Tessa Blanchard versus Jordan Grace. Just like I said, Shelton Benjamin could show up at the end to challenge Moose for the world title, You know, making his intentions known. When Jordan Grace makes that change to heel that I think is coming and wins that knockouts championship, I could see Tessa stepping out. And, you know, this would this would be something that um, would would rock the wrestling world at its core. Now, there's people who want to see Tessa back and there's people who don't want to see her back. Um, I do have a few knockouts on this list because if you look at the the knockouts ultimate X match, like they they are struggling for some top end talent in the in the company right now. And we're, since you're not paying Trinity anymore, they're going to allocate those funds 
to some women. And, you know, right now in this whole rebrand and really over the past several years, TNA has been about give us a second chance, give us a third chance, give us a fourth chance. Well, if you're asking that of the fans, you have to practice what you preach and consider that for talent as well. Would it be a huge risk? Absolutely. freaking lutely But I think if you're going to do it, I think this is the time to do it. And it would have people talking. That's for sure. Another one that's going to have you talking. Patrick Clark, the Velveteen Dream. He came out recently. He did an apology video. I do not think it was convenient. You know, I don't think it was just by chance. Well, no, I should say it was awfully convenient. I don't think it was just out of the blue that he just decided this was the time to apologize. I think he did it not because he's campaigning for a job with NXT, but because he plans on being back in the public spotlight, being back on television. Controversial figure. And his apology was very, very good, very heartfelt. You could tell he's done a lot of work on himself. And there's a huge potential there. And uh, that is my kind of gut feeling that when he showed up um, on social media recently, it's because he plans to be in the public spotlight again. AEW is not the place for him to do that with everything they've got going on right now. TNA is the perfect place for this dude to do such. I've got two more names here. This is getting closer to what I kind of think is a possibility. I do think that, um, again, we don't know what the big name is. It could be Nick Nemeth. You know, people are expecting it's a it's a surprise out of nowhere, or it might be, you know, it might be something we're expecting, you know. But I do think multiple names are going to show up. And as I said, the knockouts division, we lost Mickey James. We're going to lose Trinity. It needs a huge boost. I've I've got two names here that I'm I'm I don't know who I, I, even right now I don't even know what name I'm going to show you next because I've got them neck and neck as possibilities and you very well could say I don't agree with you uh, there's no way in hell either of these two people are showing up but that's what we're just having fun right we're we are spitballing names we're we're having fun with this we are fantasy booking. First name I got, the former Lacey Evans, Macy Estrella. Now, first thing you're going to say is, well, she said she wasn't passionate about this. If you listen to the entire interview, she was not passionate about being part of WWE and being a WWE superstar. She has said she does miss this. She misses the fans. She misses the action. She was asked if she would have any interest in Impact or AEW due to their part-time schedules. She said, I don't even know what their schedules are. But she did sound optimistic to wanting to return to the ring. She would only do so under a part-time basis, I can assure you. She's running this coffee shop and doing many other projects right now. And a couple of years ago, I would have said, hey, AEW is a fit because AEW was also a part-time wrestling company paying you full time for full-time work. They had one show a a week, pay-per-view every few months. Now you got three shows a week. Now you got a pay-per-view. You got more pay-per-views. They're not every month, but they're every two to three months. Controversial, um, but someone that would have a lot of star power in the company. And she got a lot of starts and stops in WWE. They couldn't find the gimmick for her. Uh, But this is a place where she uh, absolutely could be there at the top. And I think there is a possibility. If you're pitching, this is a part-time wrestling company. We're going to pay you for full-time work. She doesn't have passion about being in the WWE. And that's the (laughs) exact kind of person you got to have in the company. Like Rosemary does not have, her goal is not to join the WWE. She's very happy, very content with TNA over the years. So again, this is a name that you you might be saying, yo, there's absolutely no chance 
that this person's showing up, you might be saying, I don't want her to show up. That's not what this is about. This is about what does Scott Demore think is a big time signing big time person to bring in to the company. My very last one. And I don't know that anyone's been talking about her bringing her name up. I haven't seen it. Um, the, the one name that I'm not bringing up that people have, have brought up is Ronda Rousey. I do not expect that to be a possibility. So I didn't want to waste my time on the graphic, to be honest. At first I thought, you know what, maybe, but, um, no, I, I don't think that's happening. Last name I got here. Uh, this would be needle mover. In my opinion, this would have people talking. Um, and I don't know how, how possible it is. I have no idea at this point. Former Mandy Rose. Um, we don't know what her level of passion is for wrestling. I don't know that she ever wants to wrestle again. But AEW is not a place for big time women free agents. They haven't even signed one yet. They have not made a major free agent splash with the women. Now you can argue, well, do got Deanna Perrazzo and Taya Valkyrie went there? And I understand all that, but someone, um, someone like this, they have not signed anyone like this. I think they would have signed her already if it was a possibility. I think she wants to do her only fans. She has teased showing up in the Royal rumble, but people do that all the time. I think she has a genuine, just like Lacey Evans doing the, the only fan stuff. I think they have a genuine desire to continue to do that. That's something that Jordan grace does. And it has worked out very, very well for her. Um, and by the way, speaking of Tessa earlier, I believe her and Jordan Grace are, are friends. So that was one thing I forgot to bring up earlier. But I think there's a genuine de- uh, desire to continue to do those things. You could do them in AW, but again, the bloom is off the rose. There is so much negativity going on there. And now with sexual harassment, why would why would most women want to go there at this point? Now that this has all been, you know, Deanna already agreed before all that. But right now, this is the time. And the opportunity to really, really beef up the knockouts division is there. And, you know, the, is there a possibility she goes back to WWE? Absolutely. But with everything that she is, she's making, you know, probably more money now by far. Not doing anything. So a part-time wrestling company say, hey, show up a couple days a month. We'll pay you well. I think it works for her and the wrestling world will be talking. So let me know what you guys think. Um, you don't have to agree with anything I said with any of these names that I'm not trying to convince anyone that these are the people showing up, but I think we're going to get many people showing up. And um, we don't, again, I, I've said this three or four times, five times, maybe we don't know what Scott Demore's definition of a big time signing is. But if I had to narrow it down to three names, it would be uh, Mandy, Nick Nemeth, and Macy. That's where I'm at with all this. And, um, you know, but I but I do think there are some guys that could show up that could make, you know, a, a real, real, real splash in all this. So that's what I got for you guys. Uh, thanks for hanging with me on this podcast. And we will see what ultimately happens and who shows up.